Welcome to Nicholas Hood III Ministries, a ministry of hope, spiritual inspiration, personal power guided by Christian love. May the power of God's Holy Spirit fall upon you as you sit back and enjoy today's program. I introduce you now to Pastor Nicholas Hood III. Today I want to talk about the spiritual leader. I want to talk about what does it mean to be a spiritual leader? Not just a minister, but a spiritual leader. I'm talking about you. And I want you to ask yourself, you're looking at this program because I know there's something spiritual in you. But ask yourself, and maybe you're a spiritual seeker, but today I want to talk about leadership, and in particular, spiritual leadership. This is a message that, uh, you know, I have been thinking about. We've just come through the Christmas season. And in the Christmas season, we have in the Matthew version, uh, you know, excuse me, the, the, the Mark version, we have the, uh, you know, the invitation, the, the introduction to Mary and Joseph, the, the baby Jesus. Uh, but in the Matthew version, uh, you know, we, we go from the shepherds in the Luke version to the uh, wise men visiting in the Matthew version. But after the visit of the wise men, uh, King Herod puts out a death notice on the baby Jesus. And he orders all the babies, all the children, two years of male children, two years of age or younger, to be killed. And so Mary and Joseph are warned in a dream to go to Egypt uh, to get away from Herod. And we don't know how long they were in Egypt. But I think that there's some lessons on leadership from this story. And let me break them down to you and for you. Number one, I believe that Joseph, you know, who doesn't get a lot of, uh, you know, uh, credit. You know, we have Mary, the mother, through the Immaculate Conception. But it's Joseph who God keeps talking to and, you know, the, through angels. And... I want you to think about the leadership qualities that we learn from Joseph. Number one, Joseph takes the, he's the one who tells Mary that we've got to basically run and, and we've got to flee Bethlehem and go to Egypt. Uh, and Joseph does that because he is worn by an angel in a dream. Uh, and they have a circuitous route in Egypt. I had an opportunity to go to Egypt in 2009. I led a trip from my church. And one of the things that I learned was that the Holy Family in Egypt, Mary Joseph and the baby Jesus, were there perhaps a little bit longer, if not a lot longer, than we might have ever imagined. And they did not stay in one place. Uh, you know, they, they traced the route and uh, it may have been hundreds of miles that they traveled throughout Egypt because they were afraid that Herod's men would find them. And so there in Egypt, being warned in a dream, Joseph tells uh, Mary uh, by an angel, uh, you know, that we can go home now. We can go back to Bethlehem. And they head back to Bethlehem and... Uh, you know, the, the rest is history. And so I want to break this down for you in terms of the spiritual leadership of Joseph. Number one, Joseph uh, is, is a spiritual leader um, because he has positioned himself uh, in a place where God can talk to him. You know, when we talk about being spiritual, uh, spirituality has a number of different components. Uh, but one of them is you have to be in the right place at the right time if you're going to get the right message from God. And that's what Joseph does. We hear of in Matthew chapter 2, uh, three, actually between uh, Matthew, yeah, Matthew chapter 2, there are three times where God speaks to Joseph in a dream. Uh, number one, we have Joseph being told uh, early on, do not divorce Mary, uh, you know, because she's 
bearing the Christ child. Uh, and so that Joseph is spiritual enough uh, to hear a message from God. Joseph is in the right place at the right time. He has positioned himself to hear the word of God. And the word of God has come to him in a dream. And you might say, but what do you mean he's positioned himself? He, he hears the dream three times. Number one, do not divorce your wife. Number two, take the wife and the child, baby Jesus, into Egypt. And number three, it's time to leave Egypt and go back to Bethlehem. And what is the common denominator in this? Or what are the common denominators? Number one, uh, God speaks to Joseph in a dream. Number two, the one who's speaking to Joseph, uh, you know, is an angel through the dream. And the negative point is that Joseph, if you dream, if he's like you and, and, and me, uh, you dream when you sleep. Now, when I was a child, and maybe sometimes now, uh, I daydream uh, and uh, have wonderful daydreams. But the kind of dream that I would imagine happened to Joseph is Joseph lay down to sleep. And the point that I'm making, my friends, is that if you want to hear the voice of God, sometimes you just have to lay down. Uh, you have to stop what you're doing and lay down. And... Uh, I learned this lesson when I was 21 years of age. I had just gone to divinity school, the second week of preaching class. Uh, I, I learned this lesson. And the lesson was this. In the preaching class, there were only, I don't know, 8 to 12 students in that class. Uh, but the, the regimen was you had to preach a sermon every week. And the instructor was trying to condition us to preaching every week and coming up with a different sermon every week. And I was terrified on the second week because I ran out of things to preach about <laughs> on the second week of divinity school. First week I preached about David and Goliath. The second week, I didn't know what to say. But uh, the class was on a Tuesday. On that Monday at four o'clock, uh, I was just uh, anxious that I was going to be embarrassed going to class and not being able to preach. And so I prayed to the Lord about four o'clock that afternoon. I said, Lord, I want you to give me a sermon. Give me at least a scripture that I can preach on because I don't know what to preach. And I lay down at four o'clock uh, that afternoon in my dorm room and the Lord spoke to me in a dream. And it was the most fascinating dream. In the dream, I dreamt that uh, I was at the Rouge Pools in Detroit. Those of you looking at this who are from Detroit will know about the Brennan Pools at Rouge Park. And it has two Olympic-sized pools and one diving pool. I went to the diving pool uh, and was just sitting by the diving pool. And I saw a woman, a beautiful woman, walk up to the top deck. She climbed the steps to the top deck. She got on the top deck. And she took three or four strides. She opens her arms. She does a beautiful swan dive into the water and hardly makes a splash. And I'm looking at her, thinking to myself, I can do better than that. I'll show that woman how to make a swan dive. And so I climbed the steps. Now, you know, I knew right away that was a dream because I don't do high dives. And when I was competitively swimming as a little boy in the YMCA, our little swim team, uh, I would do a racing dive, you know, which is you're just skimming the water, but I never would do a high dive. My nose is sensitive, you know, and I just didn't want to do it. And, uh, but in the dream, I climb the steps to the high dive. I walk, uh, you know, I make my strides. I open my arms, I jump, uh, I just hold my head up in the air like a bird, and I go up, 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 and then I go down into the water. And when I go down into the water, I hardly splash at all. And I'm thinking to myself, I showed that woman uh, how to make a swan dive, and I go down, 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 and I go down so far into the water that the water turns 
cold. It goes from warm water to cold water. Uh, and down there, you know, deep down in the pool, I turn around and I start making my way back up. I'm doing the little frog kick and, uh, you know, uh, panning the water out. And as I go higher, I realize that the dream uh, has gone from color to black and white, uh, that I have uh, run out of oxygen, and, and I'm thinking to myself, my God, I'm going to drown. I don't have any more air. Uh, and then I hear a voice coming down from what seems like a loudspeaker. And the voice says, I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And behold, he who keepeth Israel will neither slumber nor keep or sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade upon your right hand. The sun shall not smite you by day. The moon shall not smite you by night. And the Lord will preserve your life. The Lord will preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. And at that point, I open my eyes. My eyes are stinging with the chlorine uh, from the swimming pool. Uh, but I look up and I realize that I'm not far from the surface. I may be only one or two feet away. I've run out of air. There's no more oxygen in my body, but my feet start to kick a little frog kind of kick and, and, and I'm pushing myself with my arms. And the next thing you know, I've broken through the water and I take the best gulp of air I've ever had in my life. And that was on a Monday at four o'clock. Tuesday, during the preaching class, because I didn't know what else to preach, I preached from Psalm 121, starting at verse one, the verses I just recited for you. And when I did that, and I, and I preached the sermon, uh, when it was over, the preaching instructor, a guy named Reverend Bill Kennedy, who had uh, taken the train up from Philadelphia, he would come up every week to teach us how to preach. Kennedy looked at me, and he cocked his head like this, and he said, Hood, did you really dream that dream? <laughs> and I said, yes, sir. And he said, well, I'm going to tell you something. He said, if the Lord ever speaks to you in a dream, he said, preach it. But the next time you preach it, preach it like this. And he opened up his coat. He flashed it. His, his suitcase had a flashy lining, much more flashy than mine, like this. And he ran down the aisle. You know, he's an African-American uh, preacher. He ran down the aisle of the lecture hall at Yale Divinity School. He was hollering and about how I would lift up my eyes to the hills. And he ran a circle uh, around the lecture hall. And then he, he came back up and he said, next time you, the Lord speaks to you in a dream, preach it like that. <laughs> It was the funniest thing I'd ever seen in my life. But he taught me a lesson. But I learned a lesson from that. And what I learned is that God will speak to you in a dream. And, you know, I'm taping this program on a Saturday night. And when I go home, at some point, I'm going to go to bed, getting ready for church tomorrow. And when I go to bed, I will pray a prayer. And it's always the same prayer on Saturday night. Lord, give me the right illustration to preach. Now, that's going a little way from Joseph. But the point that I'm making is that for the last 40, almost 48 years, I've been employing that technique. And what I've learned is that God will speak to you at night, but you have to position yourself to receive your blessing. And what I think was happening with Joseph is... Uh, Joseph becomes a spiritual leader in his household for Mary and Jesus when Jesus is just the little infant. And part of what Joseph is learning is that God will talk to him. And so we see God talking to Joseph, telling Joseph, it's now time to come back to Bethlehem. It's, you know, Herod is dead. You can go home safely. And what's the leadership of Joseph? Joseph is, he's telling, he's communicating to Mary, this is what God has told me. 
And, uh, you know, I think this is the time for us to go back home. And so they head back to Bethlehem. What's another lesson from this story? Not only is Joseph positioned to receive a blessing from God, but Joseph is open to the blessing. He's open to the inspiration of God. Some of us are positioned to hear God, but we are not open to receive God. And if you're not open, it doesn't matter if you're in the right place at the right time. If you're not open to hear what God is trying to tell you, uh, then you're not going to hear it. Somebody looking at this program right now is looking at this program because you want to know more about the blessings of God. And I'm here to tell you that God has a blessing for you, but you got to position yourself to hear that blessing. You have to be open to receive that blessing. And speaking of receiving, that's the next part. You know, you're open so you can receive what God has given to you. And then after you've received what God has given to you, what God is trying to tell you, then the leadership part kicks in. Leadership is when you take the message that God has given to you and you begin to communicate it to somebody else. In the case of Joseph, we have a husband communicating uh, that message to his wife. Uh, and that's leadership. You know, we, not every leader is going to be the president of the United States. Your leadership ought to start right in your own house. Uh, somebody here needs to be a leader. Uh, and, you know, you get, to, you get to a time for the people who are married, uh, you'll find that at some point in your marriage, one of you may be stronger than the other. The wife may be stronger than the husband. The husband may be stronger uh, than the wife. Uh, one may have greater mental faculties at some point than the other. Uh, sometimes one or the other will be physically stronger. Uh, and sometimes one will be emotionally stronger. And so at every stage of life, we have to ask ourselves, uh, what is God telling me? And if you're going to be a spiritual leader, that means you have to start right in your own house. Uh, be a leader in your house. Be a leader to your brother. Be a leader to your sister. Uh, and, but, you know, you can't just be a good leader with also not being a good follower. You know, and, and, and that is part of our spirituality, too. Uh, your spiritual prayer ought to be, God, show me when to lead. Show me when to follow. Show me how to lead. Show me how to follow. And then in our leadership, in the case of Mary and Joseph, uh, they head back toward Bethlehem. And then think about what happens next. They get to Bethlehem. And Joseph, you know, considers the situation. And he says, you know, Mary, I don't think we ought to stay here. You know, this is where the baby Jesus was born. We know he's the Messiah for the world, but uh, who knows? Maybe there's some of Herod's soldiers who didn't get the memo. And because they didn't get the memo, uh, you know, they may try to kill us. And so let's go all the way back home, my home, to Nazareth. And, you know, Mary's home is outside of Jerusalem. Interestingly enough, I, I didn't know that, but I learned that. The last time I went to Israel in 2018, and we went to the home of Mary. And, you know, there's a lot of things you can learn in that part of the world. But Joseph encourages Mary to take in him to take the baby Jesus to Nazareth. Now, what is that? And what's the connection to that to football? What Joseph has just done is he's called an audible. And you might say, well, what's an audible? Well, the audible my friends, is when the quarterback gets up to the line of scrimmage, he cups his hands like this, bends his legs, gets ready to receive the ball from the center, and, but the quarterback is looking at the defense. And on the defense, there are players who have lined up in a, such a fashion that it's going to make it more difficult for his play to be a success. The play the quarterback may have called 
uh, may have been a running play to the right. But if they're more defensive uh, players on the, to his right, the audible may call for running to the left. Or the defense may be stacked up uh, to defend against uh, the run. And so the audible, uh, which will be a set of numbers that he calls out right there on the field before the center snaps the ball to him, he will call a change of play. That's the audible. And so instead of running, we pass. Instead of passing, we run. And in the process, uh, sometimes it can be a more successful outcome. And in life, life is full of audibles. You know, you start off on one direction, but you realize that for one reason or another, maybe you don't want to do that. You may start off thinking I'm going to be an artist, uh, but then you look at it and say, no, uh, I'm going to work on information and technology. Uh, you may start off thinking that, uh, you know, you're going to be a business person, uh, but then uh, maybe, you know, you see the light and you say, you know, I would rather go in the ministry. Uh, you, you start off one way thinking that you're going to get married and maybe you don't meet Prince Charming. Maybe you don't meet Princess Beautiful. And, and the marriage doesn't equate to your situation. Uh, that doesn't mean that your life is over. It just means you call an audible. Uh, and when you call an audible, uh, you go in a different direction. And so life is uh, full of blessings. Uh, life is also full of opportunities to call audibles and to realize that uh, sometimes things don't work out the way that you plan. Uh, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. But the key thing is to be spiritual, to be spirit-filled, spirit-led. And how do we become spirit-filled and spirit-led? We need to position ourselves so that we can hear and see and feel the Word of God. And when we position ourselves to hear, see, and feel the Word of God, then what we find is that God begins to talk to us. So that's the word that I want to share with you today. And I thank you so much for watching this program. Stick around for a minute because I want to share a couple of other interesting things about the ministry that I'm engaged in right now. I'll be right back. This is a new ministry which is just starting. Reverend Hood needs your help in sharing the good news of Jesus Christ and his power throughout the world. If you would be so kind as to send a donation to Nicholas Hood III Ministries of any amount, Reverend Hood will send you a free complimentary copy of his book of original personal prayers and beautiful photographs entitled The Test, The Strength, The Endurance, and The Way Out. There are people all across this globe who now will have the opportunity to know you like I do because, of course, you are very forthcoming in telling stories about life, stories that are relatable, and that means something. How wonderful it is, and I just look forward to seeing how, how this platform, this new platform, will just rise and grow and really be a, a vessel through which you can be a blessing to folk all over this world. Lord knows we need it. And the point that I'm making is that in everybody's life, at some point, there's a plan B. God is talking to us every step of the way. God is trying to show you something every step of the way. When things seem to be going wrong, that's God's way. Of, of opening another door. I am convinced that God has been directing me every step of my life. On the Word Network. Today I thought I'd try something a little different. Normally I have a, a guest and we take some great topic and we talk about it and try to tie it back to the Bible. But today I just want to talk with you directly. And I want to share with you uh, something that's on my mind. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this broadcast. I really appreciate you taking the time, uh, those of you who have been sending in donations, uh, many through the mail, some through 
uh, PayPal on the church, not the church, on my website for the broadcast. And uh, these are very significant uh, because that's really the lifeline of a broadcast like this. And it's growing. You know, we've just passed one year. This is the second year. And uh, your viewership means the world to me. I wanted to share with you a couple of other dimensions of this ministry, this broadcast ministry. You may or may not be aware, but I write a blog every day. That's my goal. Every now and then I'll miss a day, but for the most part I write every day. And I'm fascinated with the blog because I write on spiritual topics and from a Christian perspective. And because I do this, I have a readership which is worldwide. Uh, the bulk of the readers are from the United States, but the second nation that reads me the most, the most is from Nigeria, of all places. Ghana, I believe, is number three. Um, Australia, uh, New Zealand, Romania, China, the Philippines. I have a big following in the Philippines, of all places. And the, the Philippines, I'm not surprised at because I spent three weeks in the Philippines in 2012 preaching and teaching at a school called Silliman University. And so some of the people I know from there uh, read the blog. Uh, Ethiopia, I've been part of four missionary trips to Ethiopia. Uh, some of you saw Dr. Asfaw and his family on this program. Uh, from my church who created a mission in Ethiopia. Well, there are people in Ethiopia who read me. Brazil, Argentina, Jamaica, um, did I say Romania, Finland. Uh, it is just the most fascinating thing in the world and I love it. And I would like you to be a part of that. It's free, it doesn't cost anything. And the last year or so, I've been writing prayers every day. And you can find me on a site, a blog site called WordPress, W-O-R-D-P-R-E-S-S, -S, and just type in my name, Nicholas Hood III Ministries at WordPress. Uh, if you can't remember all that, you can find it elsewhere. But thanks again so much for watching the broadcast today. God bless, God keep you, and remember, I am praying for you. Thank you for watching today's program. We hope you've been blessed in a powerful way. Just knowing you took the time to watch today's broadcast is a great encouragement to Pastor Nick Hood. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, we ask that you mail a tax-free donation to Nicholas Hood Ministries at 4535 Chrysler Drive, Detroit, Michigan, 48201. And the point that I'm making is that in everybody's life, at some point, there's a plan B. God is talking to us every step of the way. God is trying to show you something every step of the way. When things seem to be going wrong, that's God's way of, of opening another door. I am convinced that God has been directing me every step of my